Have you always wanted the best lawn on the block? Welcome to the Great Crew North. My name is Wade Murray and welcome to the Ultimate Lawn Spring Lawn Guide. Today we're going to be talking about seeding in the spring, should you seed in the spring, and what you should expect from seeding in the spring, and how to have successful seeding in the spring. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so first of all, let's talk about should you seed in the spring? What are you looking at? So if your lawn is less than 30% grass, then you are going to do seeding in the spring. So what we're talking about here is if your lawn is infested with weeds, but it is less than 30% actual grass, then it's time you can do a seeding in the spring. If you have large brown patches or large just bare patches that you need to seed in in the spring, or if you have no lawn at all, and you need to seed it in the spring, that is when seeding in the spring is helpful. As well as if you guys need to do some sort of lawn leveling work, and I'm not talking about a sand cap, I'm talking about large divots in the lawn left from some sort of incident over the winter, tree falling, all that kind of thing, that is when seeding in the spring is helpful. If your lawn is more than 30% grass, I recommend going with a pre-emergent in the spring and strengthening the lawn through mowing, watering, and fertilizer. And if that is the route that you guys are thinking about, or if your lawn is more than 30% grass, I have an iCard right here for you to go check out the other playlist where I talk about pre-emergence in the spring and fertilizing in the spring and how to strengthen your lawn that way. But if your lawn is less than 30% grass, let's talk about seeding in the spring and how it can be done. So the first thing to think about is seed needs to germinate between the temperatures of 8 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius. I believe it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 72 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. Don't quote me on that, I'll put it on the screen. But these are the temperatures that grass can germinate in. So if you are seeding in your lawn, you need to be making sure that your air and soil temperatures are sitting within that period. You can check your air temperatures using the Weather Network, your weather app. You can check your soil temperatures either using the Greencast tool, which I'll have linked on the screen here and down in the description, or you can use a soil thermometer or just a regular meat thermometer that you put in your turkey while you're cooking your Thanksgiving turkey. You can take that, put it in your lawn and check your soil temperatures. You need to make sure that your lawn is sitting in this temperature ways for a stabilized period of time. And this is the dangerous thing about seeding in the spring is we get a lot of temperature waves here where I am located and most places now I find don't really get much of a spring. You go spring, winter to summer. So there's about two weeks of perfect seeding time and you need to make sure that you hit that seeding time. And sometimes we get massive weather springs. Last year, we had our seeding window and then about late May, we switched back to snow and ice and then we switched back straight into summer from that. So seeding windows can be finicky in the spring and that comes to my next point. If you are seeding in the spring, you need to manage your expectations. Seeding in the spring is not the best time to seed. Actually, the start of the lawn care season, what I consider is fall, late August, that's the best time to seed. So if you're really considering having a strengthened lawn this year and your lawn is more than 30% grass, I would say focus on fertilizer and mowing and getting rid of those weeds with either broadleaf weed control or pulling them by hand, pre and post emergent herbicides. As well as this, strengthen your lawn throughout the season, even if it's still patchy, going into late August, you can do a full fall renovation, which I'll have linked down below, and that will help you guys get the best lawn on the block. And then next spring, you can start with another fertilizer program. But for those of you who really need to seed in the spring, let's talk about what you're gonna do. So first of all, now that you know that your lawn is between eight and 20 degrees Celsius, it's time to put down your seed. You need to do your prep work. Either if your soil is heavily compacted or you live in an area with clay soil, make sure that you're aerating your lawn Poking those cores in your lawn will give a spot for that seed to fall down into. Now, if you're seeding singular patches or you're seeding a brand new lawn, make sure that you clear any debris from the winter off the lawn. And if your lawn has not been dethatched yet, make sure that you dethatch your lawn to help open up those soil areas to give somewhere for the seed to contact. Now, if the soil has been sitting all winter and been compacted by that snow, which basically compacts the ground like this, as it melts, it moves across the soil. It's time for you to make sure to till up that soil, make sure everything's nice and loose, 
And those little baby seed roots that are, that are very weak have somewhere to be able to penetrate into the soil and take root to grow. Once you've done all the prep work, it's time to put down your seed. Put down your seed at a heavy rate, I would say seven to 10 pounds per thousand, and make sure that you're buying turf quality sod seed. So the Scott seed that they sell, sometimes those seeds, you can find a lower variety. Grass is like buying a car. If you buy the Ford and you think that it's gonna drive as good as a Ferrari, it isn't. And it's the same thing with grass. There's lots of different breedings, there's lots of different cultivars, and there's many types of grass. So you, if you buy the Ferrari of the grass seed, which is a turf quality sod seed, this will help give you much better results from your seeding project than if you buy the Ford per se. Not hating on Ford, just saying as an example. For those of you looking where to buy turf quality seed, you can get it at your Pavely Mart. For those of you in Canada, for those in the US, you can get it from seedsupply.com as well. That's another place to go or Seed Superstore. Uh, finally, you can also go to your local landscape depot. If you have like a, like a landscape depot that the professionals go to get seed, that's a good place to try to find sod quality seed. And when you go in, just ask somebody, I'm looking for sod quality grass seed. Most of the time, they'll have a bag that's labeled either sod quality or turf quality grass seed. And that's the seed you're looking for. You don't want pasture seed because some of these seeds can also have other things. They can have a percentage of weed mixes in them which you don't want when you're seeding your lawn. So now that it's time to put down your seed, you're gonna put down your seed at seven to 10 pounds per thousand, and you're gonna also put down a starter fertilizer with your seed at the same time. So a starter fertilizer is something that's high in phosphorus because this is what promotes root growth. And I'm gonna tell you, the best thing about spring seeding is you wanna have deep roots because those little baby roots that the grass seed has, as soon as the, the hot summer temperatures come, those roots are gonna dry dry as hard as a bone, and then that grass is gonna die. And that's when your spring seeding fails. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna get those roots as deep as possible. So if the top surface of the soil dries, this root down here still has some water and nutrients to grab onto, and it's not gonna die over the summer. Now obviously, as I said, manage your expectations. You're gonna have some summer die off, but you're not gonna be seeing, you're losing your entire seed project over the summer. So a big important thing, make sure you're spiking it with three pounds per thousand of starter fertilizer, as well as hitting it with a 16-16 or all-purpose fertilizer about four to six weeks after you've originally applied your seed is a really good thing too, because that will help give your lawn a boost. You might want to spoon feed it about every four weeks until you hit about May 2-4 weekend or Memorial Day weekend for those in the US and then it would be time to let it coast through the summer. Make sure you're sticking on top of watering through the summer and hopefully you'll have a successful fall spring seeding program. For those of you who need to do a little bit of leveling on your lawn, make sure everything is not super soaked. You don't wanna be dragging around that soil in a muddy, soaked mess. So for those of you looking to do leveling on your lawn, make sure everything is not soaked, make sure everything is dried out. Make sure that you're getting soil that doesn't have 0% weed seeds. You don't wanna be introducing new things into your lawn. Make sure that when you're putting that soil in the low spots, you're evening it out. There's products you can get for this. You can get a level lawn, or you can just use a standard garden rake, try to even out those low areas, cast it over top of your lawn. I really don't like top dressing because you don't know what foreign objects are in that soil. So I recommend if you're looking at doing some sort of top dressing this year, focus on fertilizer over top dressing because fertilizer, you know what's in it. You know what nutrients are in it, it's listed on the bag. Soil, there could be foreign weed seeds, foreign weeds, everything, invasive species, stuff in that soil, you don't know what's in it, and you're casting it all over your lawn, which can introduce those things into your lawn that you don't want to have. So make sure that if you're looking at doing some sort of leveling program with uh, like, like a top dressing, I would say stick away from that, focus on fertilizer, and fertilizer and seed together, and then the most important thing, water, water, water. You wanna make sure that that seed is getting an inch and a half of water a week, no matter what. Now it is the spring and it's normally considered a wet season. However, there are dry, dry springs. We had one last year and I was watering two to three times a week. I actually watered more in the spring than I did in the summer. So this is something to keep in mind for those of you out there who are doing a spring seeding, make sure you're sticking on top of that water because that's gonna help drive those roots down as deep as possible, give your seed the best chance of surviving the summer. Thirdly, temperature swings. As I said, you need to manage your expectations. If it gets really cold for a few days, and even if it snows, 
don't give up on your seeding products I, projects i see this happen all the time people do a seeding project it snows and they just absolutely give up they think it's totally screwed and they lost it there is such thing as dormant seeding and seed can sit dormant on the ground until the temperatures hit the correct temperature for it to germinate so if you have some sort of major temperature swing don't give up wait out the temperature swing everybody's snow is just powdered water wait out that swing wait till it gets warmer and then keep on top of your seed with the watering and the babying you're gonna have to baby it it's a difficult thing to do but seeding in the spring can happen and i've seen great success with it and i'm actually going to be doing it a bit in my own yard this summer so for those of you who are looking for a step-by-step -step guide make sure you hit that subscribe button i'll be filming that when it becomes time to do it. Finally, going into the summer, you need to baby your lawn. As I said, you got those little, little baby roots from that seed. Hopefully they're a little bigger than baby, but when those hot summer temperatures hit, you're gonna be seeing some dieback from that seed. So make sure that you're staying on top of watering your lawn, staying on top of mowing your lawn. And if it's a heavy traffic area and it gets really hot, try to keep from walking on those new seeds. Uh, making sure that you're not trampling the seed when it's dry will give it the most likely chance of surviving the summer. And if you get to that fall and you would still like to strengthen your lawn more from that spring, the spring can help get you started and then that fall renovation can get you all the way to having a lush thick lawn the following season. Seed is not a one-time thing. A lot of times you need two or three applications to get that thick turf lawn and you also need to think about most seeds take up to 12 to 24 months to become fully established turf. So think about that in your head when you're seeding. Don't expect to have a thick sod quality lawn in two to four weeks from seed. You'll see germination in 14 days at the longest, but you won't see thick turf lawn until about 12 months. So keep that in mind when you're seeding in the spring. Without further ado, thank you guys for watching the ultimate spring lawn guide, the seeding section. Keep on top of that fertilizer, keep on top of that water, and you're gonna have success with seeding, I can promise it. From the Great Crew North, my name is Wade Murray. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments, or you can send questions to greatcrewnorthlawncare at gmail.com. As well as that, you can submit questions on my website, greatcrewnorthlawncare.ca. I'll be willing to answer any question that comes in. From the Great Crew North, my name is Wade Murray. Hope this video helped you, and as always, guys, keep it clean.